Hey everybody, welcome to GDC. Thank you for joining us as Phil Spencer and Sarah Bond discuss some of the trends impacting and influencing game developers today. They'll share their perspectives on hybrid work, the significance of cloud development, growing global audiences, and building inclusive cultures. And now, Phil and Sarah. Hi, Sarah. We sure have been through a lot over the last couple of years. It's great to be here at GDC, even though we're not actually physically in San Francisco today. Yeah, I mean, I wish the world were such that we could be physically in person, but on the other hand, I really appreciate the silver lining, which is you and I get to do something like this, which means we can connect with so many more people, even though it's virtual. And frankly, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to be here to talk about the industry and celebrate the community and the people who make games, who you know we love, and the incredible power that game creators have to connect the world. And especially right now, uh, with people struggling and with what's happening in Ukraine. It's more important than ever you know, to really be thoughtful and to connect people. Yeah, you know, one of the things that's just been really kind of enlightening and inspiring to see is how people across this whole industry have connected through the empathy they have and what's happening in the world. You know, at Xbox, we have our own responsibility to players and developers. You, you probably saw that Microsoft announced uh, that we were suspending sales in Russia, stopping all aspects of Microsoft's business, and that includes the gaming business that we have. We're mobilizing resources to help people who are stranded in the Ukraine so that they can find safety, security with the resources that we have. I definitely believe that we have a responsibility in real world communities to make sure that what we do in gaming can be part of helping those people in a time of need. So we stand together as an industry, Xbox is an important part of that, to treat everybody on this planet with dignity and respect, players and employees, and we really do believe that gaming can be a force for good. Yeah, one of the things that I really appreciate deeply about games and the role that they can play in our society is how they can help people in sometimes the darkest and most difficult times through illness and through trauma, but also how they can open up beautiful opportunities and be the start of relationships that otherwise wouldn't have been. Absolutely. Meeting people and making really deep friendships, you know, by gaming together. Uh, we hear of people who uh, actually meet and marry someone all through a game. And I love that aspect of, of what it means to connect through play and just the unique ability for a gaming experience to open our minds and our hearts to something we otherwise would have never understood. In so many ways, gaming is the only media form where you can truly walk in somebody else's shoes and experience something. And I feel like now more than ever, we need that in our world, the ability to have a shared experience and empathy to, to build bridges um, and to eliminate divides that sometimes come up between us. And it's such a powerful platform for building connection and developing empathy. And the, the powerful thing about that, you know, especially sitting here at GDC, is that game developers, all of you who create games, are the pioneers of those experiences and really bringing real meaning and value to people around the globe. You know, sometimes I think people think of games as the way they were 30 years ago. But today, games bring together millions of people. You can socialize, you can accomplish things. And in a lot of ways, online worlds are now the envy of every industry. <laughs> it's like every day I read in the paper about how some non-gaming company or industry is actually trying to figure out a way to find, <laughs> build a 3D interactive world. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing at Microsoft right now when I see the engagements that Microsoft has with so many enterprise customers and what they want to learn about is how we build video games. Yeah. Uh, because whether they call it a metaverse or a shared experience or an immersive experience, the tools and capabilities that our industry has built up over decades that have enabled some of the most amazing experiences I've ever played, the industry has built, uh, are now finding a broader purpose in mm -hmm. the world. Uh, and there's a vast learning curve that we're going to go through there. Uh, but I know one of the great things for people here at GDC is the skills and capability that the industry has built have never been in higher demand. We feel that 
when we look at the talent in our organizations and how many choices they have for where they're going to go work. Yeah. Um, we see it with the valuations of companies in our industry. Um, and we really see it when teams are looking to the video game business to understand how you build experiences that people will care about. Absolutely. You know, games are a collection of systems and technology and art. I've always said games sit at this really interesting intersection of art and science, and that's what's so magical about the interactivity and the capability in our industry. But one of the things that we learn is it's not about just the bits on the screen. We've created in video games the real why behind mm -hmm. why somebody wants to spend time in our world, what experiences they get out of that, how it's gratifying and joyful to them. I think these other industries are going to go through that same loop. They're going to try to figure out, well, what is the why for their experience? If it's not a video game, what is it that draws people in and keeps people engaged and coming back? Uh, the learning that we have in our industry, I think, will be really important. I think it's an amazing opportunity for our industry. And being here at the game development conference, or at least talking at the game development conference and thinking about all the ways that game technology can uh, expand so many industries around the world just makes it really exciting right now in this industry. Yeah, it's so true. Often, like, the narratives out there will imply that uh, these worlds are going to be built and they're just going to be magically awesome. You're going to put on a pair of glasses and suddenly you're going to shift from everything that you love about the real world right into Ready Player One. But the reality is, is that creating that feel, that engaging experience is hard. And, you know, building a world that's truly engaging, game developers make it look easy. People hear about the successes, but there's so many times where a team has tried something and it hasn't worked out, right. or they've had to go back to the drawing board, or they've worked years and years and years to find that mechanic that really sticks. And I think other industries can really benefit from learning everything that we've learned over the past 20 years and really infusing that into a product and a service innovation that's truly delightful for people. And you know, I think we have an opportunity actually to sort of help non-gaming developers adopt world building tools, learn from our experiences and the wor worlds that they create, but also learn how to make those worlds safe and inclusive and built on trust. There's all these elements of the tools that you have, if it's an entitlement system, if it's the marketplaces, if it's matchmaking, that we've really worked to hone and, and perfect over the last couple decades, all built on those principles of safety, trust, and community, which I think are just so important as we move into more interactive worlds. I think you, you nailed it. Trust is such a, a fundamental thing. We've definitely, our trust has been tested over the last yeah. couple of years not only as our gaming communities have become more important to people's everyday lives, but also trust as an industry, as teams, that we can come together virtually to create the amazing things that we've been able to experience when we were all in the same building. Um, the trust of our online communities and safety and security is critically important, but also the trust that we have a unique capability with the technologies to have that, those team bonds that enable yeah. the creation of video games that is also a trust that's critical to this industry. Yeah, it's such an opportunity, but it's, it's also a challenge. You know, more industries than ever are looking to adopt the capabilities that we have in gaming, but that also means that more industries are coming for our talent. <laughs> and, you know, our industry has some of the most talented and accomplished people. And it's great to see those companies competing for their services, but it also means it really pushes us just to raise our game, to create the most opportunity for our people, and also for culture, to make sure that our cultures and our teams are places where people can really build the best games for everyone. Yeah, we've been through these transitions before where every company became a software company where you had companies like Starbucks that are now building mobile apps and I'm connected. I've got, I have an affinity program where I'm collecting stars. It's companies are going to go through that transformation. And now what we see is companies are going to become game development companies. Mm -hmm. And and some companies might look at, I can put an avatar in a meeting room and, and that's the end of it. We know because what games have gone through over the past decades, that it's going to be about why are your customers there? What do they care about? The lore of your brand, the safety and security mm -hmm. that they have. And it's really why I think GDC is more relevant in the global tech industry than it's ever been, because the capabilities of this industry are more in demand and gonna be more required for more, for more companies than they ever have. And it's just a, a really exciting time. Yeah, there's just so much opportunity for us as an industry. I mean, if you look at it, you know, all of the tools and services that we make to, to enable empower games, the opportunity in the market for those tools just went up by 10x. 
And that has so much implications for us, both in terms of what we can invest in the actual tool set and also what we can do in terms of investing in the people who make those games and are really, in the end, the source of the incredible innovation that we have in our industry. Yeah, if we've learned anything in the last two years with remote development for video games and sometimes learns these lessons kind of painfully, is we have a lot of evolution to do as an industry to ensure that our teams can work regardless of where they are. They can use the power of the cloud and the tools that we enable there that we have the ability to hire people and have those people, regardless of where they sit, whether they sit in a small office with a few people or they're at home or they're in a big kind of campus location, that they feel as connected to our teams, both in their function and their capability, how much they can produce, and culturally they feel connected. I just think the last two years has taught us a ton. We've learned a lot as an industry. I look forward to the continued journey um, and obviously, as more companies think that they're going to be building these immersive experiences that we've been building in video games, that's going to be learning that just permeates in, in uh, across so many different industries. Yeah, I mean, one thing that is so clear is that remote moving to hybrid work is really here to stay. And the needs of doing that when you're making a game are very different than what it is for a lot of other industries, which is one of the reasons why we've invested so much in tools to actually help game developers around the world wrestle with those very unique challenges, uh, which is why we actually created the Game Development VM. And, you know, the purpose is, is to help devs deal with the complexity of distributed development, having developers all around the world, and making it possible to just spin up a powerful system in minutes, which allows onboarding of new resources with really consistent setups, That's no great. matter where you are. And so for us, what we've done is we've just brought together all those essential building blocks of game development, all preloaded into a VM, Perforce, Incredibuild, Visual Studio, Teradici, Parsec, and just make it possible, it doesn't matter what you're developing for, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, iOS, Android, you know, it's all together in one place. You know, for a distributed developer, the idea of having just a global backend connecting the team lets each have the closest connected experience as if they were all working out of the same office and we can really capture the spirit of that. Now, one thing that's so clear over the last couple of years is more games have become a cloud service. The need to shift live ops to the cloud means that you know, almost all games in some way or another are operating in the cloud now. And we're all just been wrestling with what that transition is into cloud development. And it's complex. Teams need to figure it out. How do they go cloud native? How do you deal with setups on identity, authentication, security policies, version control, Absolutely. on and on, yep. right? And so that's one thing we think a lot about because we're so committed and focused on how do we make game development easier? How do we break down those barriers so that you know, everyone can focus on the game itself and yeah. not all of these things around it, which is the point of our ID at Azure program, which is really to really ease that on-ramp onto the cloud, bringing together access to all of Azure services, credits, learning, and expertise into a package that's free for, for game developers to adopt. And we launched ID at Azure actually in beta in January uh, with around 50 developers, and it's now coming out of private preview. It's going to be available to everyone, which awesome. I'm super, super thrilled. So now, you know, it makes it possible for developers to focus time and effort on really the creative development, on the innovation, on those incredible experiences that everyone's looking for. Yeah, you know, the, the creative vision that we've seen in video games is really tightly linked to what players are doing in the experience, how we monetize those experiences. All of these pieces come together to enable more players to play the games that are out there. We see in such incredible strength right now in retail games, and we think that's a great part of the industry. Free to play has obviously had a tremendous impact mm -hmm. on our industry as well. We see growing subscriptions. We obviously have Game Pass. I know there'll be other subscriptions out there. Really, when I think about the business models that are, that are prevalent in video game development today, one, I think there's learning there for other non-video game uses as people are thinking about the worlds that they're building. I also think about them as part of the creative canvas that our creators use, that it's as much a seed for their idea. If I'm a game creator and I think I have an idea, I really think it's the role of our industry and our tools and our capability to enable the business model such that anybody should be able to build any kind of game in the way that they want to distribute it uh, and be able to make a living building that game and selling that game. Uh, so that business model, creative link, and as you talk about a lot of the cloud services that we have to enable 
uh, the distribution and monetization of content, those things are intrinsically linked and will be linked now across more experiences that more creators are building. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to really create flexibility for creators in terms of how they want to monetize. Because ultimately what you want is someone to be able to build a delightful experience that brings people in and that they love. And that from that flows engagement and from that engagement flows monetization. And that you don't have to feel restricted to a certain business model when you're actually thinking about creation of the game. And that's one of the things I do love about subscriptions is it really opens up so many opportunities. It gives more players a chance to experience that game, maybe a game they would have never spent $70 on. They're gonna jump in and play in this subscription and find real love for that. But it also opens up that flexibility for developers because it exposes their games to more players, more players will experience what they have, and that means that they could take risks and maybe create things they otherwise wouldn't have if they were Absolutely. locked to only one business model. And you know, we're always stunned. We look at this data over and over again, but consistently, um, you know, the engagement in a game, when it goes into description, goes up eight times above where it That's was incredible. before. And members actually spend 50% more. So it's really lowered the barrier to entry, and it's created a whole new market in love for games and gaming experiences that otherwise wouldn't have existed. So. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited to see gaming becoming a bigger part of our industry. We have our subscriptions, Sony's announced theirs, and I anticipate other platforms are gonna do the same because it's so, so good for both developers and players. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I'm incredibly proud of the role that Game Pass has been able to play, not only in our big first party games, but in the indie games and great games that people are finding. But I also wanna make clear to people that are out there that for us at Xbox, there's not one business model that we think mm -hmm. is gonna win. I often right. get asked by developers, if I'm not in the subscription, am I just not viable on Xbox anymore? And it's absolutely not true. Like we look at retail of people selling games, buying games, and it's an important part of our P&L, you know that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that we invest resources in to enable our developers to do great work there. Free-to-play games, we want those to flourish on our platform. It's really about the diversity of business models. And this is where I sometimes contrast against other forms of media that we get compared to, whether it's music, whether it's video, where the models have really condensed down to maybe one or two business models that are working. I fundamentally believe a strength for us in the video game business is the diversity of business models and the strength of those. Definitely in Team Xbox, we invest in the business models that developers are asking for and ensuring those are in flourish, flourishing so that every year we see great new experiences that come to our platform um, that might never have been built if yeah. the business model capability wasn't there on our platform. Yeah, I mean, that's why it's so important that we continue to evolve everything that we're doing on our platform. And you've seen us take a lot of, the, you know, we've done a lot of these things, you and I together over the last couple of years. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> you know, like evolving our Red Store, the Windows Store, our open App Store principles, thinking about multi-platform publishing, adding subscriptions to transactions, evolving the business model, and also, as you say, really embracing what it means to have the cloud and cloud native gaming be something that's happening because that also evolves distribution, which is really interlinked with that. Yes. And just the incredible power of making it possible for someone to build and manage a game and be able to have that game playable across all devices, right? And you know, the, the, the world, the paradigm today is, is that you, you know, if you wanna have a game that's on Windows, if it's on consoles, if it's on mobile, you have to build separate instances, often completely different games for each experience. But the, but the cloud has actually made it possible for us to reach all three billion players in the world by actually running the game cloud natively and by layering on top of that tools that we have, like Cloudware APIs and touch controls. So it's really relevant for each screen size, allowing us to really grow the overall opportunity for an individual game, making it easier to manage the community and lowering the cost to reach all of those people around the world. That's right. I, I think the we talked a lot about business model. When you bring up cloud, you, you said very well, the distribution of the content is another layer that we yeah. build. And we think about, okay, how do I build the games? Game dev, dev VM is a capability. New capabilities like ID at Azure, I think are, are awesome. Making sure that creators have the business model diversity they need to realize the vision that they have for what they wanna build and make a living doing that. Then it's about distributing the content to multiple screens. I think that's critically important. And we also think a lot about the player. Yeah. So when you think about the player and the cloud, well, what does that enable? You see it, how quickly now, whether I'm on console or I'm on a PC or I'm on my phone, how quickly via the cloud can I go in and try something? 
um, try get an experience. Is this a game I want to go play? Is it a game I want to go download on my Xbox? Do I want to just keep playing sitting here on my phone while we, we wait for the setup to get set up here um, <laughs> while I'm sitting on my PC at work while I never play a game? Maybe I, I start to stream it. The capabilities that we build that enable great experiences are very, very important. And the end user, the player's Absolutely. advantages that they get, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about subscription. It's a flexibility in how I build my portfolio of games. That's a great experience for the player. Cloud allows me to try new things. That's a great experience that we can offer people so they can kind of, they can try new things that they might never have trade, tried before. And it's, it is fundamental to us of putting that player at the center, which we've said for years. I love we're sitting here at GDC talking about put the player at the center and the creator at the center. Right. And we want to enable both of those teams, both of those communities to just do amazing things. On the team side, the creator side, we know this as an industry. We want to hear voices from different places. We want to hear stories told from teams that have built great games over decades, but also new teams that maybe we haven't heard from before. We want to experience amazing things that have come from new voices that are entering our industry, and now through a couple clicks and a lot of work, can deliver a game to literally hundreds of millions of people through the capability that we have. We'll get amazing new experiences built through this from teams that we've never heard from before. Um, and those teams can actually build games that billions of people can play. I think that's just an incredible time for our industry. Yeah, the thing that I've really come to like deeply understand the longer I spend time in this industry and in particularly focused on creators is in order to put the player at the center, you actually sort of have to put the creator at the That's center right. first because you have to enable the creator to build that experience and truly make it easier and democratize what it means to develop a game. You know, my vision and I think our, our shared goal is to really make it possible for anyone to be able to tell their story or in, in an experience through a game because it opens up so much opportunity. It opens up so much shared experience. It changes the way that we see the world. And in the end, you know, we're striving to create an industry that's an inclusive industry that's about personal choice, acceptance, innovation, and ultimately human connection. That's right. It's really about people working together, the technical parts of our teams, the creative parts of our teams, the economic parts of our teams coming together to build amazing games that, that really result in just experiences, games that we all want to go play. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it's an amazing time to be at GDC, to get to celebrate that as an industry, uh, to focus on our capability, our culture, and our role in the industry. Uh, and I just, I, I couldn't be more proud than I am right now to be in the games industry. Thanks for the talk, Sarah. It's always great. And thanks to everyone for tuning in today. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, everyone. Have a great GDC.